Welcome to Oberling's Easel. Today I'm going to work on a 16 by 22 panel and I'm going to work the way I always work these days which is to just have nothing on my mind, clear my mind of everything. And just, I know it's going to be a sky so I'm putting uh, sky white, blue, uh, putting it in sort of the area where I want the light buildup. So I'm just putting it right on from the paint. I mean, you spent all this time mixing paint on the palette, why not mix it on the canvas? So I'm adding now some of the components of sky color, which is little bits of oranges, more blue. Um, I mean, this is, this is a really fun way to work. I mean, I really have no idea what's going to happen. So that's some green. Or actually, that was um, alizarin, crimson. So now I'm just brushing it all together. Okay. I have no idea how it's going to turn out. But that's kind of the way nature is too. You look at the sky and every minute it's changing. So why not enjoy the process instead of having some kind of preconceived idea in the mind to just, you know, try to follow. You can work directly off of a feeling and, you know, like improv. You can improv your way through this. It's a lot of fun. Of course, you know, all the study in nature helps so that you know, you know, what, what to do. But you also have to keep in mind that you just have to let the process happen. And here I am, I'm just, I'm using a paper towel to just push some of the things together and see what it's starting to suggest. You know, it's a lot of fun that way. So, I sort of have an idea now, um, to just created this idea, that there's going to be a, a larger sort of mysterious anchoring cloud behind the um, or in front of the, the sun effect. Um, now, you know, you got lots of red there. I didn't want that much red there, of course. So what am I going to do? Well, add some green. Remember the complimentary lesson that I gave? So the green's going to knock out the red or the alizarin. You don't want too much alizarin. If it's a sunny day and you want sunlight, alizarin will kill the... Uh, the feeling of sunlight. So let's kill the alizarin, but we always have a little bit of in the, in there because there is atmospheric pinks in the sky in the distance. So we could absolutely uh, just improv this. So I'm adding more blue, more blue. I mean, I, I always like that, and this is my own personal taste, um, you know, this whole idea, this battle between the forces of, of sunlight, clearing skies, and storms. So, it's something that, that I bring to, to painting. Um, and I've, I've managed to, you know, have this, this fun way of, of going about it. But you could have your own, when you develop your own way of thinking, you, you'll surprise yourself by what you come up with, you know? So now I'm starting to see, you know, at this point you start to see where your main sunlight is. And you're starting to see some of the rhythms. Now you're starting to put in Ah, I see a cloud. Let's put in a cloud shadow. You know, 
cloud shadows have to go back in space. And you see that, that I'm reinforcing the lights. There's many layers of atmosphere in the sky, many layers of clouds, low hanging ones, medium sized and high ones. So to me, to make a complex sky, which is part of what I love to do, I mean, I love skies, I love trees, I love landscapes. So you love everything. You, you are constantly studying it. I can look out the window and see clouds moving across the sky, changing all the time. So here I am, I'm starting to, okay, I'm seeing clouds now. And, you know, you can be wishy-washy for a while, however long you want, but it doesn't take me long before I start to see, hey, you know, I want these clouds to be there that I'm seeing in my painting. And I'm going to start, you know, developing them now. And you'll notice that, you know, I'm always trying to use gestures that incorporate the entire painting. You know, not just one fraction of the painting uh, or one half of the painting. I want the gesture to include the whole painting. So here I am again, killing some of that red with more um, phthalo green. So phthalo, you know, talk about sky greens. You generally want to stick to phthalo uh, because it's a cool green. Um, and of course you don't want to have someone to say, hey, you got green in your sky, but you could sneak it in there and have it be part of a, an exciting triad if you play your cards right. So, I mean, why should, you know, modern artists have all of this sort of fun of being spontaneous and, and realists have to sit there and chain themselves to a photograph or anything. You could, you could just paint according to how you feel. And uh, you sit down and it's a complete adventure. You find a new place you never thought you had or saw before inside of you. So again, I'm working with just blue, alizarin, orange, white, phthalo green, and that's it. So now it's a question of, you know, I'm putting a little bit of now cadmium red into my violets, my blues. So the, the cadmium red is going to be a little warmer than the alizarin. So on the clouds that are closer and more overhead on this diagonal, I'm throwing in some of that. And of course, everything's a progression. So that's, that's going to start appearing everywhere. Now, you know, I'm not afraid. I'm not, I know, I don't fall in love with the surface paint. You see, I, I mean, some people at this phase in a painting, they fall in love with their own brush strokes. And they go, ooh, isn't that beautiful? I did that. I want a greater truth. I want, you know, I mean, you're telling a story. I mean, have you ever noticed that, you know, when somebody is telling a story and they're more interested in their own voice than in telling a good story? Well, that's the thing you gotta be careful of when you're a painter. You fall in love with your, your brush strokes and you are really just talking to yourself at that point. And, <clears throat> you know, so, yeah, it's fun to, to have an accident happen, but you can't just be uh, stuck to that, wedded to that, and, and unable to move. Go ahead and like it, but don't be afraid. You can always get it back again. You know, that's the least of your concern. What you need to do is have a large light effect <clears throat> and great sweeping flows to the painting. So you go back and you re, 
re-establish, uh, redo areas, and you just keep work on everything you do. You you constantly are looking at the big picture. Is this a light effect? Is this light effect going to travel across the painting? See, I didn't want it to stop in the lower, you know, in the area where there's sort of a dead space in the lower right. I want to continue that idea of the, continue that idea of the, um, the light coming all the way through, because their eyes going to follow the light. So I still don't know, you know, as I'm doing this, I have no idea what I'm going to be in the mood to do as, as part of the landscape. I'm developing a mood in the sky and I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about spring and then, you know, an idea, I know an idea will come to me, but it'll only come to me when all of this this uh, sky is really kind of ready for for me to come in there so again I'm breaking it up again I'm adding some more of that color all the way through some of the blue sky holes um, blue cloud shadows and you know I, I you know again I'm I'm in autopilot really I'm just trying to connect with something deep within inside of me and I'm not afraid you know, it's going to come out, something's going to happen. And whatever happens, I can always fix it or I can always put it against the wall and look at it again. I mean, sometimes I'll do a sky and uh, nothing will occur to me for the landscape part. So what? I mean, I'll still have fun doing the sky. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm, restating what I lost when I started to blend. I'm putting some of the cloud shadows back in. Now remember, you know, clouds, when you get to a certain point, we're, we're not going to rock climb any clouds, okay? So we're not going to have hand holds and toe holds on clouds. They're very soft, they're aerial, they're ethereal, they float in air. So the edges are, for the most part, going to be soft, especially in the shadow areas, and they're going to settle down. Um, I mean, people who go berserk for the bravura style don't see that, you know, if you look at painters like Sargent, whatever they did, they made that shadow look like shadow and it sits in there. It doesn't leap off and hit you over the head with brush strokes. So, you know, I mean, you got to have, again, you, you know, you don't fall in love with the, the brush stroke for the sake of the brush stroke, in my opinion at least. You know, I mean, all I can do is show you what I do and you can take my ideas and go somewhere else with them. But I don't want you to think that oil painting is like acrylic where you just, you know, fill in a colored drawing like a paint by number you can be incredibly spontaneous and creative with it. 
And this is why it was designed. This was designed for artists by artists. Okay? That's what oil painting was. Because artists wanted to do this all along. And when they had only egg tempera at their disposal, you know, it drove them crazy. See? So, you know, watch how it, how it develops. And of course, you know, you can develop it your way or, or my way. As long as you use it as a, um, a taking off point. So again, you know, you just you use uh, hybrid techniques. whatever technique you want to use to get a sense of vitality and randomness and truth. I mean, obviously the truth is the ultimate goal. And the truth is you know, trying to, to get things the way they are in nature. Okay, So, you know, again, there's a lot of fussing around now and now it's time to go back and reestablish some of the key edges. Of course, you know, I get up occasionally and I step back and I look to see what I'm doing, whether it carries or not. You know, step back, get up, scratch your head, wonder. Then, you know, you never know when an idea will hit you about what to put as a landscape. So I'm still thinking the mood of spring, the whole restless quality of the sky. I mean, you just have to be completely, you have to start the painting without anything on your mind. I mean, really, that it's, it's like yoga, maybe. Maybe it's like yoga, where you, you're just, all you're focused on is the painting. You're not thinking about your day at work or, you know, what's happened in the world. You just completely immerse yourself in this world that you're creating. And it's, it's uh, exhausting but exhilarating to, to do this. So I'm going back and I'm, you know, reaffirming some of this, the shadows that before were 
lost is I'm starting to see exactly what's going on in the sky that I'm creating. I can play around and now I'm, I can start putting in some of the more serious shadows. But I'm working it into what I have. So again, you know, I'm, I'm playing around. I, I push and pull, push and pull, push and pull. So you don't just sit there and fill in and say, I'm done. Okay. That, see, if you learn how to paint this way from the beginning, it's an investment worthwhile. Because if you're thinking, you know, what am I going to fill in? then you're not painting, you're not enjoying it. So here I am, the ideas are going to crystallize into the landscape. I don't know when I had this idea, but I thought of a, a time when I, you know, was thinking about spring and there was, uh, you know, an, an orchard on a hill so I'm thinking about that and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to make this orchard on a hill. So now I'm, I'm basically starting to think, you know, I, I got myself an old sketch that I did of a group of trees in an orchard. But of course, I'm, I'm going to change that to fit this landscape. Um, I'm just using it as a launching pad. So I'm, I'm now looking at that sketch and just sort of playing around with some ideas. throwing in the distant landscape. And pretty soon I'll have a better shot of this, um, better angle of this, what I'm doing. But, you know, you, you just suddenly you think, oh, now's the time. <laughs> now's the time to have your landscape idea. So yeah, now I'm, uh, so this is a plum tree and I'm starting to just throw in the idea, the gestures of the trees. So, I'll get, a, I'll get a wide angle of this pretty soon. See, it's, it's just, you're so immersed in this world that you're creating. 
And the only thing holding you back is, you know, your fear of messing it up. But you can't mess it up because oil paint cannot be messed up. I mean, everybody thinks you could spoil a painting. That is such rubbish. You know, every, every thing you can do, you can undo and redo. So if it's looking a little too blue, uh, put a little green in it. If it's looking too green, put a little red in it. If it's looking too yellow, put a little, you know, blue, green, red in it. <laughs> you know, whatever. And just, you could just keep working. I mean, this whole idea that you, you spoil it. I mean, if you're doing the watercolor, I could see that. I mean, I don't know anything about watercolor. Except I never want to do it. Um, and I have great respect for those people who work well in watercolor. Um, I really can't um, at all do it. Because I, I can't stand the idea that once it's down, you know, you can't muddle with it. I want to muddle and muddle and muddle. And of course you can muddle up to a point, obviously I'm not using a lot of paint. I have a good medium, so I'm not using a lot of paint right now. So I can change stuff. Now if I was putting paint on with a trowel, like some painters do, then you know, you could see where I would run into problems because I would start having to add more and more paint just to get fresh colors. But this is the kind of paint I like. I like a certain thickness and I just love the way it is. So I'm extending the light effect. And, you know, at a certain point, there's too much paint to do the little details. And there has to be another sitting. I mean, that's I haven't figured out a way, in many cases, to completely do a painting of this kind of intricacy in one sitting. So the paint does become a little oppressive. Uh, there's, you know, down on the bottom, there's a lot of... A lot of things going on so I can fiddle with it for a while but I love coming back into it the next day with fresh eyes and you know and then the next step it just seems to work out that way where I do everything I have two phases two types of existence where I need to completely start a painting and have my head completely clear and my spirit completely abandoned to the painting. And then there's the touch-up days when you can really just come in there and say, well, I've already done all the heavy lifting. I just need to, you know, add some more details here and there. And I could be painting and talking to somebody or I could be painting to a documentary or I could be painting and it's already, the creativity is not going to be at all, um, you know, uh, uh, altered by it. The idea is pure. It comes from my heart. And then the, the idea of finishing it, well, you know, you could just, it's just tiny little, tiny little forms over and over again. I mean, think about fractals. You know, you, you take a large shape and you keep subdividing and subdividing and subdividing. So a square, a, a circle is really a series of squares, you know, steps and squares uh, going around, just like on a TV set or a TV monitor or something. So you get the idea that, that, that with detail, all you're doing is subdividing the forms that you already have into different things. But, you know, I, I can show this painting, I'll post it, 
when it's done and it'll just look a little sharper. But the main idea and everything there is what I want to share with you, um, you know, and, the, and just the genesis of it. So, you know, I'm throwing in a rock wall and, you know, I'm just suggesting it and And it's, you know, it's, it's tedious work, tiny little bits of, of work. And then, um, you know, you can see how I've left it for this one sitting. And then um, later on, I'll post it finished. Thank you.